Over the past year, we've made a number of changes to the work of the Directorate of Public Health in order to enable us to take a key role in improving and protecting the health of the population. This video is to give you an overview of some of the priority areas for public health in the island at the moment and the work that we are doing to address these. We expect the major public health challenges on the island to be similar to those in all developed countries. That's largely around issues of lifestyle and risk factors, which, if we can tackle them, should be able to make substantial inroads into mortality and indeed improving quality of life. What we don't have yet is good data on the Isle of Man population to understand how these risk factors affect our population or the current burden of disease and mortality that our population experiences. So our current priority is really to improve the data so that we can understand what is currently affecting our population and how to approach that. But the key areas will be around improvement of diet, physical activity, weight management, reduction in smoking, and addressing alcohol consumption, drug misuse, and sexual health issues. The strategic goals are very much around improving quality of life and length of life. And in terms of the DHSC priorities, helping people to take responsibility for their own health and that of their families and indeed communities is a core outcome which we will need to address if we are going to make health services sustainable going forward. So helping people to have the environment in which they can address risk factors and lead healthy lives is going to be vitally important going forward. So we collect, analyse and interpret health-related data into meaningful information. We use census data, we use uh, registry information and we use health data to support and inform our decision making. We use this information to see how healthy the island's population is and to spot any risks to health. Coming up we'll be conducting a health and lifestyle survey which will give us some really useful information about the health of the island's population. Health improvement focuses on population level health, so all the way from the youngest child up to the oldest adult, trying to make the most of their health and well-being and trying to give them the best that they can have um, to be a contributing member of society. So my particular area of work is focusing on weight management, and so that involves diet and physical activity. Um, physical activity can be anything from gardening, playing if you're a child, all the way up to elite sportsmen and women. Um, and within our diet we're talking about everyday sensible options, trying to keep things as healthy as possible. We're looking at throughout the life course, so from breastfeeding all the way up to the older adults. And we're trying to get people as active as they can so that they can fulfil a, a healthy lifestyle. We're going to be using data and evaluation to have a look at what we've got at the moment and we're going to hopefully try and improve these, look for any areas of gaps and try and fill these with something that's evaluated and evidence-led. Our Tobacco Works focused on three key areas, preventing people from starting to smoke, trying to help people to quit smoking and also reducing people's exposure to secondhand smoke. Public Health developed and also coordinates a Quit For You Stop Smoking service. We run five clinics around the island every week and there's also several GP surgeries who offer the service. As part of the service, specialist stop smoking advisors work with anyone who wants to quit to develop their own personal quit plan and they can also offer advice on medication and provide vouchers for nicotine replacement therapy. It was a really significant change to make our pubs and workplaces smoke free in 2008 and it's now also illegal to smoke in cars with children under 16 present. From July this year, new legislation will ban tobacco displays in shops and also tobacco vending machines. Public Health develops campaigns to support new legislation, such as our recent Smoke Free Cars campaign. We also support national media campaigns like No Smoking Day in Stoptober, which help prompt quit attempts and remind people of support available. This year for No Smoking Day, we launched a new smoke-free pledge, which encouraged people to make their car, home or themselves smoke-free. 
This year we'll be starting to develop a new tobacco control strategy for the island. We'll look at local needs, identify priority areas and work with various organisations to develop a new strategy and plan. My remit uh, for this strategy is to work with stakeholders um, across government, the private and the third sector and also the community. And working with these stakeholders, we're going to devise and develop and deliver the drug and alcohol strategy. Now to do this, we have set up two groups. So we have the drug and alcohol steering group, which is um, the strategic group, and this will oversee the delivery and approve the final drug and alcohol strategy. We also have the stakeholder group, which is uh, made up from uh, many groups uh, across government, many different uh, departments, and also, again, the third sector, and also we have a layperson on this group as well. The remit of the stakeholder group is an operational one, so these are the key people who will help develop the drug and alcohol strategy. And we'll also be working together uh, on the joint strategic needs assessment. Uh, this is known as a JSNA and these people together will work with our provider and we will use this information to prioritise the objectives of the drug and alcohol strategy. Working in this way really helps us to understand the needs of our population and using an evidence-based approach we can put in interventions, support and help to meet the needs of the local population using an evidence-based approach. Here in um, Health Protection and Public Health, we're about um, planning and delivering effective services to protect the population of the Isle of Man from environmental health hazards with our teams of colleagues from environmental health and infectious diseases. We're all about trying to prevent the spread of disease, trying to prevent infections and then containing them so that they don't spread around the general public. Part of that we might do some contact tracing, so where you might have an infectious disease such as meningitis or pertussis, whooping cough. Um, we'll be in touch with the patient that's maybe got the disease and then we'll sort of follow through who they've been in contact with and see if there are any vulnerable people that we might need to see that maybe need to have, I don't know, a vaccination or a, an antibiotic in this case where it's specified. There might be an outbreak of a, of a disease in somewhere like a care home or a nursery, so it might be norovirus or whatever, and we'll work with the, with the care home or the nursery or the workplace to look at how best to deal with stopping the spread of that. And in the wider world, we keep an eye, an eye on what's going on, for things like what we call emerging diseases. So that'll be things like um, Ebola virus, you may have heard of, or um, Zika virus, the one that's been going around more at the moment. And we're linking in with our colleagues in the UK as well as in Europe, generally, looking at how they're protecting the world, as it were, and then what we need to do for our little bit here to make sure our population is safe. We need to build an open and honest culture where everybody is able to make informed and responsible choices about relationships and sex. For example, with understanding the risks to our fertility, for planning healthy pregnancies, when developing new relationships in later years, through changes to our life, health and body image, which can affect our self-esteem and the relationships we choose. And also, with the risks to our sexual and reproductive health ever-changing, we need to be informed, enabled and supported in our choices. The sexual health strategy will involve partners across government, the voluntary sector and our communities to ensure service improvements are based on identified need, where they acknowledge and address inequalities and improve sexual health outcomes. We'll be reviewing our services against quality standards and identifying key areas for development over the next five years. We aim to prioritise prevention, build knowledge and resilience, particularly among young people, continue to reduce the number of 16 and under 18 conceptions, reduce unintended pregnancies amongst all women of fertile age, reduce the transmission of HIV and avoidable deaths from it, reduce rates of sexually transmitted infections among people of all ages and ensure people remain healthy as they age. Furthermore, the process and outcomes of positive sexual health can be observed and measured and it's important that we do this to see whether our decisions are having the results we anticipated. As part of our current marketing delivery, Public Health produced leaflets, guidance documents and factual information to support health improvement initiatives, disease control and Ireland's vaccination and bowel screening programmes. 
These items are available in either printed or electronic format. Over the coming years, we plan to introduce social marketing into our delivery, and this approach will be used to develop our activities, with an aim at changing or maintaining people's behaviour for the benefit of the individual and society as a whole. This is an effective way to change health behaviour in many areas of health risk. To keep up to date on the work we do, visit our dedicated website page at gov.im public health or follow our regular information feeds at Facebook and Twitter on public health IOM.